in this video, I'm going to show you how to set a table saw up. This one's just come back from the menders because the mechanism that allows you to raise and lower the blade was completely broken. And such was the size of the component that needed to be changed. That completely meant that the table saw had to be taken to pieces. And consequently and understandably, that's had an effect on everything else. So it needs to be reset up. So with a speed square placed up against the blade, but making sure that the speed square isn't touching any of the carbide teeth, you can clearly see a little crack of light at the bottom. And that means that the blade in an exaggerated format is leading like that. And so I need to adjust this blade further to the right in order to make that happen. Now, when you consider that with these blades, the only actual blade adjustment that you've got is to do that. To adjust it this way means that I need to make a, a correction to the machine itself. So having taken off the, uh, the lock and sliding this out of the way, it exposes this screw, which goes to this. And this is actually like an offset lobe, okay? Like a camber. And if I place a screwdriver in there, this was mega stiff, but I've slackened it off now a little bit. If I roll it, you can see it reduces to the left, allowing this to go back a greater distance. So if I now lock that off, we can recheck the blade. Okay, so now this time, you can clearly see that there is no light at the top of the bottom. So now that we know that the blade is 90 degrees to the table. So that's our first problem solved. And so the next job is to make sure that the fence is completely parallel to the slots, the mitre slots that we've got down here. So for this process, I'm gonna use a T-square. Now this is an aftermarket one. I got this one from Axminster, I'm not sponsored by them. It's just where I tend to buy most of my stuff because I find that it's, um, it's the most reliable actually, and probably the best quality for money that you can get. It certainly isn't the cheapest by any stretch of the imagination. Um, and I dare say it's not the best, but um, all in all, I think it works pretty well. Okay, so on this mitre slot here, which is little holes up here that drive grub screws, and on the back of them, there's these little ball bearings. And the idea being is, is that you can, you can increase or reduce them in order to make them fit perfectly into the slot so that you get less slop. But for our purposes, I mean, what we're trying to do is, is that if you think about it, when this slides into the table saw slot, the ball bearings are actually pressing against this side and on this side, it's just a sheet of flat steel. So worst case scenario, we could slacken those ball bearings off if we wanted to, and we could just make sure that we orientate by forcing it in this direction in order to make sure that we get an accurate measurement. And this is what I'm talking about. So with the mitre gauge into the slot, if I wind over the fence until I get a contact, and then lock off the fence. Pushing in this direction, I can see that there's, there's no gap there. And then while I apply that force in that direction, along here, I can see that there's a huge gap down the bottom there. But luckily for us down here, you can see um, a little Allen screw, and that is a number four. And if we slacken that off, crack what it means is is that I can slacken off this here I can move this back over and tighten this down and now contact there and a little bit of contact there so I now know that is completely parallel and that is good and tight because we're using this mitre gauge as effectively an improvised dial gauge you need to make sure when it comes to setting up the blade that using an engineer's square back of this box section 
they're equal on both sides. If they're not, you have two choices. You either take a file and you make them so that they're completely square, completely equal, or you pick one, put a mark on it, and always make sure that you reference the, the particular point of the blade that you're going to measure against that one spot. So what I've done is I've taken the, uh, I've taken the mitre gauge, I've marked tooth, which you can't see, but I've put a, a black mark on the side of this particular tooth here. And if I slide that tooth over, that's as close as I can get it without actually touching. There's no contact there. But if I take the same tooth over to this side, it makes contact. The blade is like that. So I need to find a way to adjust this blade like that. I need to skew the motor like that in order to straighten that blade up. So on this side of the table saw, there are two number five Allen bolts up here that basically hold the, the chassis of the motor against the top of the table saw. And by slackening those off, you can then change the orientation of it to make sure that you get it 90 degrees. And there are the two number fives that I was talking about. So I'm going to undo that one. These are pretty tight, so obviously I've kind of gone over them to begin with. And this is me just really showing you where they are. And that's the second one. And I'll undo that one as well. And you don't have to remove on, certainly on this model, you don't have to. I'm not saying on all models you wouldn't have to. And that in turn is going to allow me to actually shift the, uh, the axis of the motor to make sure it's at 90 degrees. This is the tooth that we're using. And there's no contact. And if we take it to the other, the other side, there is a huge gap there now. So I need to, to bring it in that direction. I'm going to give this a tap with a, with a rubber mallet and see what difference that makes. And that looks perfect. At the risk of moving it, I'm going to take this out and slide this on the other side. And I'm going to bring that tooth over to the other side. And that is exactly the same. So what I need to do now is do those screws up without changing what I've just done to this blade. Now that's nipped up, it's not really tight, but what I wanna to, want to do is I wanna go back and check it again to make sure that it hasn't moved because sometimes tightening these things down has a horrible habit of moving them. I can't hear it or feel it touch. Take the same marked out tooth, which is that one, to that side there. We've got a minuscule gap, I would say. Let's check that. Okay, so there is our chosen tooth. And it's not touching, but I can't see a gap. And if we move it over here, and we bring the same tooth around, It's exactly the same. So we now know that this blade is completely in line. So I just go down and I'll just nip those bolts up and make sure that they're super tight now. This is the front of the blade or the front of the table saw and if any closer physically than I can imagine adjusting it, it would touch. So let's check the other end. This is the back of the table saw. And again, with that chosen tooth, with the, uh, the black line on it, certainly to the human eye, that couldn't be any closer. And with that final adjustment, 
we're all set and the machine is nice and square and will cut safely and will help avoid kickback and just make it a much nicer, smoother and more accurate tool to use. I hope you found this useful. Thanks for watching.